war number 11 here and we're getting we're getting there we're getting through the season here we're up against new avengers 2 you can see that both of us are in platinum 1 uh, at the time that this war started so i've got a, a bit of a smaller war this war which is uh, totally fine i'll be taking that sigil witch and then grabbing that domino with my apocalypse that i can get him up to max genetic code without having to bring in cable um, and then I'll also be taking that Sasquatch there I won't have any fights in section 2 on any paths and then I have a couple mini bosses uh, that <clears throat> I think they're gonna be a lot more interesting than the mini boss fights that I've had in my previous videos um, for for the wrong reasons, but uh, probably a lot more interesting to watch. And uh, of course, I am bringing my five star archangel because I don't have a six star archangel. So anyway, uh, this first fight we've got Scarlet Witch. You know, if you understand how she works, which I mean, I, there's not really anything to understand about her. Basically, she. When she throws specials, she gains instability, and uh, she has a a chance per instability to cause random debuffs every four seconds. It's, it's honestly, it's uh, I don't want to confuse anybody or um, it's just not important. What is important is that Apocalypse doesn't care about any of that shit. He don't care. All right, so it does have combat deja vu prowess so you know just because I, I can't I'm not comfortable dexing either for special attacks and I don't want to take like crazy block penetration on those uh, I am going to just play this slowly with apocalypse which means parry medium light back off and play it basically like you would play mix master and um, for the most part I'm just gonna ignore her uh, instability because frankly you can't really control it anyway unless you're controlling her power. I could use Archangel. Archangel is a really strong matchup for her just to kill her quickly. But uh, again, I mean, I just feel more comfortable with a rank four apocalypse as opposed to a five star Archangel. And I also want to use Apocalypse. So here, like a noob, I just throw my shit right into her block. She's like, all right, cool, I got you. She gains herself an instability. All right, you guys see that little gray passive underneath her? That's uh, that's like the chaos surge, and it, every, it cycles four seconds, and when she has an instability, every four seconds she has a chance to give a buff, uh, give a buffer a debuff, based on how many instabilities she has and who cares all right she did so it took a little got uh, got tagged a few times by her but uh, no big deal all right we are using white mags guidance here I you know when I'm the domino is just not to be trifled with she's uh, just dangerous anywhere. Things can happen against Domino that uh, sometimes don't make too much sense. And so anyway, now you guys see I just added three bubble shield passes right out of the gate. Exactly what I wanted to do. Um, when that gets to 10, her following attack will be unblockable. This does have uh, the protection. It's EF knockdown protection. There we go. Another couple bubble shields for me. All right, I'm not unlucky. You don't have the crit failure or anything like that, so I can dex that. And yeah, I mean, you guys can see, not hard. You just gotta be careful. And the guidance really is just for the extra ability accuracy and um, and to bypass limp, the limber master if she had limber. So, um, <clears throat> you know, two imperfect fights, but Apocalypse is at four genetic code. That's all that matters at this point. No clue what the hell I'm doing right now. I am doing nothing. All right, here we go. Up to Sasquatch. 
on node 26. Again, Doctor, or I'm sorry, Apocalypse, Doctor Apocalypse, um, is just he's just perfect for this node. Uh, so we are going to block the first uh, attack into our block. Now this is actually kind of weird. Uh, watch. Wait, is this maybe the following war? I'm pretty sure it's this war. No, all right, it's not. Anyway, ignore that. Uh, disorient immunity, boom, don't have to worry about that. Stun Reflect is now on cooldown, so we can stun him as we wish. We're just gonna get to the SP2, throw it. And, you know, I prefer to push uh, Sasquatch to the SP2 just because there's less risk evading it. And, you know, if you try to block his SP1, it, ha it does have a chance to stun you, so. Yeah, don't wanna do that, but. Uh, you guys can see, I mean, you know, this is this is probably, this is pretty typical. Uh, now, with Wrath of Tanarak here, he is stun immune. Of course, doesn't matter because of stun reflect. You're going to play him stun immune during the stun reflect anyway, but uh, yeah, boom. He did. Alright, no fights in section two. Uh, we had a couple people clearing eight and nine after the boss is down. Um, so I am just taxiing Legacy. And here we go. All right, so I've got these three minis here. I really like Archangel for Magneto on Safeguard. It makes the most sense to me. Uh, Hercules would be fantastic, but Hercules is banned this war, as he always is. So I'm just using my five-star Archangel. Um, Archangel is immune to ability accuracy reduction based on an abilities ch a, a champ's abilities. However, and, you know, you guys are probably thinking too, Magneto is heavily bleed-resistant. It doesn't matter. As long as he gets the bleed and poison debuffs, then Archangel can convert those into neurotoxins, and, uh, you know, Magneto is not immune to neurotoxin damage by any stretch. Um, so, what the thing that you just got to be careful of in, you know, in this matchup is uh, Magneto will still have his, his enhanced attack rating against Metal Champ since Archangel is Metal. So you guys can see, I mean, I'm also using a 5-star, obviously, but I'm taking some significant damage through the block. I definitely don't want to push him to his SP2 and take that block damage, so I'm just going to go ahead and let him kill himself here with the Neurotoxins, and we get through it. I mean... You know, I think that's a pretty safe matchup. And again, on Safeguard, you know, the only real difference between a six-star and a five-star Archangel, like the only difference that could affect a fight is the health pool. And, um, you know, I knew I was going to be patient, and that was good enough for me. Plus, again, we were, I think we were clearing the boss with only five people. So we had five people that were waiting for the boss to go down. So, you know, we kind of had to get a little bit more creative, maybe... Uh, that had to do with it as well. But, uh, all right, you guys, I keep bragging about how I just kick this fight's ass every war. And guess what? It's it's not every war anymore. Not after this one. So, this, I've given you guys uh, multiple examples of how to perfectly play this fight with Apocalypse. Now I'm going to give you an example of how to perfectly misplay this fight with Apocalypse. And it's really... Just a single mistake that starts a snowball effect. You guys will see. All right, so you know, we're going to bait out a heavy. We are going to full combo into the SP1, and boom, I accidentally canceled my fifth combo hit with my SP1. So I'm like, well, shit. So now uh, I'm getting no power because of polka dot power here. She still has her stun. You know, I can still apply withers, so that's not a big deal. We'll do. We'll go ahead and do that. But I'm like, all right. I need to get some power in this fight, or this is just going to be a really long fight, and I'm just risking things. So, fortunately, Apocalypse has great range on his heavy attack. I think I am going to whiff on a heavy attack in this fight, though. So it's not perfect. I would honestly, if I could redo this here, I'm going to whiff on this one. No. Nope. All right. I don't know what I'm talking about. Clearly, here I'm going to whiff on this one. Whoop! And she's like, "Thank you, sir." Um, if you guys get in this position, you screw up, just back yourself into the wall um, to help with spacing. Very, very simple. Now we're back up to the SP1. We are going to throw the SP1. The only issue at this point is that little orange passive underneath her. That is the, I believe it's the Utopia Dimension. And when she has that active... 
you are taking damage back. It, it acts as a thorns type of uh, mechanic. So there you guys can see with recoil, with the utopian dimension or whatever it's called, uh, I'm able to skirt by in that fight at 20%, but you know, that is pretty much worst case scenario outside of dying. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, all right, who cares? Who cares? Here we have a spider ham. Now let me tell you something about this fight. Let me tell you something about spider ham in general. He's my least favorite defender to fight. But Archangel with guidance on this node, especially Horseman Archangel here, he is just a top counter. Uh, okay, so the last fight started poorly. Let's see if we can top ourselves by starting this one as poorly as possible. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. So boom, um, we you know we kind of get saved a little bit by the passive unstoppable that we got from the horseman. Uh, there I throw the SP1 because I don't want him building spider nonsense, but I did have taunts on me, so I took direct burst damage. And at this point, I'm like, you know, maniacally dashing back to try to get through it. And uh, fortunately, Archangel is just, he's Archangel. So, ugly war. We're able to get through it. Um, not my best showing, but, you know, honestly, I was starting to feel myself a little bit too much. Um, smoking everything with Apocalypse. It's nice to be humbled. So anyway, that is it for this war video, guys. The next war video is the biggest one of the season for me. I had the most fights that I've had in a season in a while. Um, in, in a war, I mean. Including a boss fight with, uh, with somebody other than Killmonger and Apocalypse. So leave a like and a comment. Subscribe if you want to see that video. And...